Hey there, so I'm really excited to go through this video and take a look at an issue that I've had with the RC600 and the RC500 and I, I hope it's something that they can fix in the future or give us the option to work around. Uh, but for right now, I wanted to go through a solution that I think I found in order to mitigate it. And it's in dealing with the tempo sync or the MIDI clock being sent from the RC600. So I'm going to put a loop in the RC600 and we will see that the MIDI clock is sent to my uh, Helix unit here, my Helix floor. Currently the tap tempo is red, which means that it is taking the tap tempo from the internal clock of the Helix. And I have a MIDI clock being sent from the uh, or a MIDI cable being sent from the RC600 to the Helix floor. I'm going to put in a loop and we will see this red uh, button change from red to blue to show that it is receiving the clock from the new uh, BPM from the RC600. So I'm just going to put in something that is more rhythmic so that we can definitively tell uh, where the one and the two and the three and the four are in the beat. So it'll sound like this. It'll be... I'm just hitting on a guitar, but here we go. And now we see right here that the Helix is receiving the loop information from the MIDI clock. And what is interesting about this is I will hit the stop button and it will stop receiving the MIDI clock. Now it's gone back to the internal clock that I had, which was 240. I'm going to go ahead and hit play again. And what I'll actually do, I'm going to put in a delay patch that I have on the uh, Helix in order to show you what happens when the delay is on. So there's a delay patch happening on the Helix now. And when I stop and it reverts back to the internal tempo, it will be unfortunately affected. It does weird things like that where it reverts back to the uh, internal tempo. So, so right now I, I set it to a different tempo. Now I'm going to start the loop again and it will uh, adhere to the clock of the uh, RC600. when I stop it, it reverts back. Now, I'll show you the delay that comes with the, uh, as an internal effect from the RC600. I have a delay now attached. This is coming through the RC600, and this delay will remain uh, in time, all the time, no matter what whether the loop is playing or not. It does not revert back to a different internal tempo when this uh, loop stops. So that means that I'm really stuck to using the RC600 for all time-based effects because I have not been able to get the uh, time-based effects to consistently send time information to the other effects, uh, the other units outside of the RC600 without having, um, without having the tempos change, uh, without having a loop, uh, performing at all times. And there are lots of times in songs where I want all the loops to drop out while I'm just performing, uh, the song and I want all of my delays to continue in the same set pattern. It would, I don't need that glitchy sound to occur and my delays to become off sync when I stop a loop. So uh, I think I've showed the issue that I have here. Now the solution that I've come across, uh, I actually was not looking for this solution um, when I found this unit. I was looking for something else uh, to affect uh, a synthesizer that I have. But 
this uh, unit is crazy, and I'll go over uh, the preset when we check it out on my computer. But right now, I have this is labeled MPC because I was sending it to a uh, MP, a Kai MPC unit. I'm gonna just uh, that's gonna be sent to the Helix now. So I'm taking out the clock, which I'll be getting from the uh, RC 600. It's going in, and now where it's going out. I've affected the unit to replace some information, some MIDI information. This is kind of hard to explain, but when you hit start and stop and it completely stops uh, all the loops on this unit, it is actually um, sending a all start, all stop message to every other unit. So that is why that unit um, fails to continue sending the MIDI uh, clock because the all start, all stop message is uh, embedded in the code. I don't really know why it is this way. Um, I think it can be useful for certain cir circumstances. Uh, you know, when you have multiple units together, maybe you hit all start and all stop. You want everything to stop uh, when you uh, when you stop this unit, but um, for time-based effects, it does not seem uh, that useful. So, I know this is a little hard to explain, but um, this is where things kind of get exciting uh, to me. I will go ahead and play the loop. And this is really nice uh, visualization, but you actually see everything syncing up on this unit. Now, I'm going to stop the loop and you should still see those lights continue. And they are in sync with the light here as well. There might be some drift. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at this in a long-term scenario where they might become off sync after a long amount of time. But uh, I'm just uh, going off of what I have so far uh, been messing with for the, the past 15 minutes, and I haven't seen any issues. So I'll turn it back on. And also, you'll see the blue light on the Helix is still receiving this clock information. So here we go again. Now, I'm going to turn on this delay that I had. Stop the loop. This delay will continue. You don't hear any glitches, any reverting back to an internal clock. It is allowing this to persistently send clock data through. And what is great about this, uh, this solution is even if the firmware allows you to choose between sending this all start, all stop message, uh, which I hope they do because I think a lot of people are experiencing this issue. Um, even if they allow you to choose, if you have this MIDI hub, and I'll go through uh, showing you what filter I allowed to filter out those messages. Um, you can have another output receiving this all start, all stop message in one of the many uh, MIDI outputs that it has. So it has multiple MIDI outputs. You could route this MIDI input to another MIDI output. And that MIDI output can contain the all start, all stop message like another looper uh, where you might want to stop everything with just one button. So, really great piece of gear. Uh, this is called the MIDI Hub. And uh, let's hop on over to the computer and I'll show you what I did to uh, make this occur. Thank you. Okay, so as promised, I wanted to go through this and show you what I've done in order to filter out this information. So right now I am connected via USB to the MIDI Hub. The MIDI Hub software uh, I think it's just called MIDI Hub Editor. Yeah, it's nice and blurry. All right, so there we are. Um, 
and what I've used in order to uh, create this change is I have turned the message of stop into the message of start. And this uh, mode, uh, I'm simultaneously just replacing it. So I'm replacing what stop into start. And I am allowing that, uh, you know, you can copy these settings if you like. And um, what that is doing is it's taking MIDI from A, transforming the message of stop into start and sending it to the output of A. And that's what we were uh, experiencing. So right now it actually is also registering this um, this BPM. And what's cool about this now is it's uh, nice and blurry once again. If I double tap this uh, button I have for tempo on this thing, I just changed the BPM. Uh, nice and autofocus to 125. Um, so I didn't even actually have to send any information uh, via a loop to this unit in order to get it to send that BPM information. Now I'm going to just start a actual loop and then we can see what the start and stop uh, looks like. So here we go. So it's generating a loop which should be sending out another BPM. Uh, just so happens to be uh, 130, which is you know not too uh, far off of the uh, double tap that I did earlier, but here we are. So we have 130. Now I'm going to hit the stop button on the loop, and we're gonna see that it changed. We're gonna go up and see if we can find that. So this stop command was embedded in the MIDI clock. So the incoming stop command came in and I transmuted it to a start command with the MIDI hub. And that is allowing the two uh, of that the event to change, <laughs> which is really cool. I don't know what this active sensing is, uh, but it's I think it's around based around the clock. Now let me see if I can so it's, it's constantly taking note of all these things. All right, so now I'm back up to the top. It's auto-sensing all this stuff. Now I'm going to hit start on the loop, and we'll try to catch it. Oh, I didn't do it yet. Hold on. All right, here we go. I'm starting the loop. Now let's go back up and see if we can find it. Yeah, I don't even know what half this stuff means. But I know that there is a start a start meter in here somewhere. Let's try that again. So let me catch up to it. All right, so okay, so it looks like when you start something, it's sending this message. And I got to be honest, I don't know what that means, but, oh, here it is. The start was right after that. So that start message is occurring and I hit stop just afterwards as well. And it recomputed it to a start. So that's allowing this MIDI uh, information to persist as a consistent MIDI clock to external devices. Um, you know, I think this is really going to help me in adding more effects to the unit, more delays. Uh, this will also allow me to add in delays and filters and uh, different uh, time-based effects that will affect the actual loop, not only incoming uh, audio effects, but uh, audio effects that will af um, affect the entire loop, such as, uh, what were they called, like uh, the uh, loop effects? Uh, as well as the um, input effects. I, I feel as though I don't really have to rely on these effects as much because they are uh, time-based. I'll be able to start utilizing bigger units that will have delays and things like that in them. So I hope that's helpful. And uh, yeah, really appreciate uh, you checking it out. And uh, let me know if this helped.